All praises to Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem. <laughs> it's like Yahweh Kakodash, double honors to our apostles and elders here at Great Millstone. Uh, Apostle Elder Ramlop, yes, uh, two days ago, video titled, They've Been Compromised. I already knew what it was about, who it was talking about. Because if you read the book of Sirach, chapter 39, it tells you that uh, they that basically dwell in wisdom will be occupied in prophecies. And looking at the time we're in now, the prophecies are popping off. We already know the the big major prophecy to come next, you know, the uh, the microchip. And then with all that happening, you have a lot of uh, you have Esau at work basically paying off our people to tell them to go ahead and comply, to go ahead and comply. And uh, you got these false shepherds out here that's taking the taking the money taking the, the 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 bank the bribe the check to pervert the words of the lord and to have them comply with the system in order for either some type of gain for themselves so i already knew what the title was about and lo and behold that's exactly uh, the spirit that apostle rollo was in he was did a response video to elder yashawamba who who made mention of how the elect in romans 11 will not bow the knee and Apostle Ramlaf had made a statement and he went into the uh, lessons on how uh, the nation of Israel, we basically, we, we, we're not supposed to be like these other nations when it comes to leadership and authority and power structure and, and guidance and counseling. We are on another level. It's not supposed to be people taking bribes and perverting judgment in the nation of Israel. That's not that's not why the uh, Heavenly Father chose us and gave us his laws. Now, if you look at Esau society, you already know everything's corrupt. There's this case that's going on right now, Rittenhouse, right? I don't know much about it, but why is it that just about everybody, either on the comment boards, anybody you meet can, can easily say, yeah, they're going to let them walk. They're going to let them walk. Why? Because they already understand that the society we live in, Esau is in power and judgment is perverted. Um... There's a respecter of persons, in this case, respecter of races. Respecter of, uh, yeah, respecter of persons. Oh, well, he's a police officer, so we're going to make sure he gets off and we're going to make up a bunch of bullshit to make sure he gets off. Whatever the case is, man, we already know what happens. But this is how Esau operates. Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, forbid that that be the same case in the nation of Israel. No, hell no. And, um. Even the other nations know that we're held to a higher standard. That's why whenever we do our foolishness and our folly, it's basically like a stain on, uh, you could say, the Heavenly Father's name. Because the other nations are basically like, oh, man, they just like us. They can be bought out. They can be compromised. We can go to them and have them sell out their own people. And these are the children of the Lord. These are the ones that they're supposed to be the right ones. They're not supposed to be taking bribery. They're not supposed to be compromised. They're not supposed to settle for, you know, take the names, the name of the Lord away from the doctrine. All for, for their own personal gain. You know what I'm saying? Not supposed to be like that. And that's why it's a problem when it's amongst the nation of Israel. This is Ezekiel chapter 36. 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way before me was the as was as the uncleanness of a like a, of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them, for a blood for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen. And they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. What, do you, what did they do? They was worshiping other idols. They was basically acting like heathens all the way from the, from the uh, top of the head to the shoe to the toe of the foot. Um, it was either looking like them, shaving the beards, balding their head. Commend uh, adultery, sodomy, idolatry, right? Pervert, uh, you know, setting up their own brother, sacrificing their own children, whatever the case is, right? 
So he says, um, and when they entered to the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said unto them, these are the people of the Lord and are going forth out of his land. So that's a stain. They're like, wait a minute. This is the people of the Lord. These are the children of Israel. They're the ones out here, you know, doing all manner of wickedness. They're like us. These are those people. And that's why the Lord said, but I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went because his name is on us. So when we go out there and embarrass ourselves and embarrass our fathers, embarrass our household, embarrass the priest or, in, or embarrass the name of the heavenly father, it's a, it's a stain. It's, it's it, the most high don't like it. That's why he always says what judgment shall begin at the house of the Lord. And he's going to deal with what the false shepherds, because you stand in the seat as a gateway, really, to the heavenly father and his son, Yahweh Shai. You got, you know, people come, if you're a shepherd or a pastor, people come to you or uh, with the expectation that you're going to lead them the right way, with the expectation that you're going to provide right judgment. You know, how confident, how confident with the poor and the, um, uh, the guilty list be when he's presented to a case before you and he knows, okay, this is a man of the Lord. I know I'm wrong in this situation. He's going to judge the right judgment. And then you go up there and you pervert judgment for, for filthy lucre. You get, you took the bag from behind closed doors. No, no, no. See what's going to happen is this. And you are supposed to be the one that's supposed to do the right judge or the right thing. That's what the heavenly father does like. And that's, why the elder apostle uh, Ramlam said they've been compromised because they have been compromised because this is what they do to the sheep for their own personal gain for filthy lucre. And it's easy to sell out a nigga. It is easy. And when you have a, a, a government like a body, whereas they do not um, stick to the scriptures, they do not stick to what's righteousness and give right judgment and they pervert judgment. Instead, they take bribery then the society base. I mean, the damn government is no different from Esau Edom. It's no different from the damn heathen. See, we held to a higher standard. And like the brother in the camp always talk about Isar, Jake looked for any reason to avoid being an Israelite or being called an Israelite as an excuse to be held to a higher standard. Jake don't want that. Jake just want to be slaves. That's really what they're afraid of. Let's see. All right, this is Deuteronomy 16 and 19. It says, I'll start at 18. It says, Judges and officers, thou shalt make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy power giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Apostle Ramah read this as well. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Rest means wrestle. Meaning you you trying to, you know what the right judgment is, but you wrestling with it for the sake of either getting this guy off because you know the person or because you like the person. That's how these Edomites are. That's why we can sit up here and, and, and look before this damn case even resolves. And we can already dictate, yeah, the devil going to go free. Yeah, the devil going to go free. They got them cold, cold. They got them. What's a little phrase? Dead to rights. Whatever that. I'm not sure what that means. So I'm not even going to say it. But they got him caught him red handed on camera. He's clearly guilty of this. They're going to get him off. Whatever, he's going to get a life sentence. People can already know that without even a course being settled. Because this is the society we live in, the society is ran by Edomites so-called white people. They are not the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. They are not the children of Israel. So that's why they do that. Now, in our society, in the way we operate, we're not supposed to do that. The little power we have, man, especially because we were blessed with, uh, since the priesthood has expanded to all the tribes, we were blessed, blessed with the, uh, basically, the, you know, the spiritual, uh, the spiritual uh, sanctuary. That the Heavenly Father got operating. And if we call ourselves judges and teachers and prophets and leaders, that 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 type of this type of attitude that you see amongst the Edomites is not supposed to be so amongst us. It says, Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eye, or eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of righteous. And that's how these Edomites are. You know they can get paid off. The judge can get paid off. The witness paid off. Damn jury paid off. You can buy them out. These, why do you think the people who get away with the most always have the most money? Monsanto. 
all of these uh, pharmaceutical companies responsible for these narcotics. Uh, you know, why is it that they, if they do have a settlement, it doesn't make mainstream news? Why? Because of money. People getting paid off that should be exposed. Right? You may have a little, you may, I don't know, lose a loved one to some narcotics or something, go sue. If you manage to, to get through after the years they fight you through, if there is a settlement, they make sure that that goes under wraps. Why? Because they can pay people off or they can pay you off to shut you up. They may say, look, we'll, we'll, we'll give you this amount of money. You know, let's, let's go ahead and stop this. So now I'm going to go to up oh, Jeremiah chapter five. Yeah. Verse 26, it says, for among my people are found wicked men. Yeah, Israelites, wicked Israelites. They lie wait as he that set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Now, how they become great and waxen rich? By deceit. That means they're perverting judgment, b breaking the law, whatever the case is, amongst their own people. To become great and wax rich. That's the same amongst the pastors, amongst our people. It says, they are waxing fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. You see, they don't judge the cause of the fatherless. They take in robberies. How you think they're getting rich or fat? They have respect to persons. They being like Edomites, basically. It says, yet they prosper and the right of the needy do they not judge. So they're not given righteous judgment. Again, if this needy person comes to you, they're supposed to know without a doubt that you are a man of the Lord and that you are a man of integrity and that whatever the situation is, if that man was wrong, that you're going to set it right according, you know, according to righteousness sake. That's why the Heavenly Father set us up. That's how we're supposed to govern ourselves. We're not supposed to be like these goddamn heathens, man. These goddamn uh, uh, other nations. The Lord said we are much better. He says, yeah, Matthew 5, 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt wherewith have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. To be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth, you have to maintain that flavor and maintain that light. And the moment you turn away from walking the path of righteousness, which is the light, then it is no more light. It's darkness. That means you're going down an evil path of something that's not good for you. You see, you see how the Heavenly Father, this is how he set up the nation of Israel in general. He said, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And it's really talking about the elect. Uh, dealing with the light of the world, but if we claim, if we believe that we are of the elect, we are supposed to govern ourselves according to the scriptures, according to righteousness. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, you know, you saying, "Well, I'm gonna take the bag, even though it's gonna cost thousands of Israelites either their uh, their safety or even their lives," because I want to get to this point. I'm not worried about them. And you got plenty of those people set up in these positions. These those are those really they're really niggas. Whatever I'm doing good, I ain't worried about that. You even got some that may, that may pervert you and tell you like, yeah, yeah, you should go, um, you know, take take the jab, take it. But they themselves may not take it. And you got Jake, you got people amongst like uh, amongst Israel like that that'll do that. So he says. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. You see, the Israelites to the other nations, we are basically, their, we are their gods. We're their power. When they look at us, they know like, oh no, those are the men of the Lord. They, they're righteous people. They operate differently. Right? So when we go to the mother nations and we become like heathens, what do they say? These are the people of the Lord. Because we represent, you represent your parents, basically. We represent Yahweh, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. If you, if your parents raise you a certain way, but you go out and act like a fool and embarrassing yourself in front of your neighborhood or the city, 
you bring a shame to them and they'll tell you, they're like, I feel so embarrassed, even though they didn't the ones that do it, but because they know that they raised you different. So you carry, you carry, you could say they're, uh, you, you carry the burden on their shoulders, basically. And they'll get mad at you because they'll say you going out there looking like a fool. You embarrassing my house or you bringing shame to my name, just like the heavenly father. We brought shame to his name when we go out and act like these other nations. And, and in a sense of judgment, taking bribery's, uh, a, if you read the book of uh, Nehemiah, them other, them people of the other nations, uh, kept coming to us to try to buy and sell on the Sabbath day because you had Israelites who would do that. And when Nehemiah found out, he cursed them out and he found them other nations. He said, let me catch you around here again. I will put my hands on you because we ain't you trying to get us to sin. You see? And I think I had uh, one more. Okay, yeah, Isaiah 50, 59. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot that it cannot save, neither his ears heavy that it, it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your power. Your sin and your sins have his hid his face from you, that he shall not hear, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have murdered perverseness. None calls for justice or any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and they speak lies. They can achieve mischief and bring forth iniquity. Who does all this sound like? It sound like the acts, the daily acts of the other nations, especially these Edomites. Yeah, their fingers are filled. Uh, their fingers are filled with iniquity. Their hands are defiled with blood. Their lips speak as lies. They speak big perverse perverseness. None calls for justice or plead as truth. They they don't trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. That's Esau all over. That's it's Esau's name all the way. So why is it a problem for Israel to do it? Because we're not supposed to be that way. You see, the Heavenly Father set us up with righteousness, and He gave us laws, such as commandments, to govern ourselves. To be the holy, righteous people. He said, be holy even if I am holy. I'm giving you the secrets of life. I'm giving you my law. So you're supposed to be pure. But if our people are, he said, what? Their sin before me is this crimson. Though you wash yourselves with water, your sin before me is crimson. Meaning it's red. I, I can't help but see it. Because y'all acting like a bunch of damn heathens. That's why he called them a degenerate plant. Our people are a degenerate plant. And there is a call for repentance. See? Because this is what our people do. The Heavenly Father gets upset when he sees verse 4 again. He says, none call for justice, nor any pleader for truth. Meaning he's like, anybody going to stand up for righteousness? And he said that during the time of Isaiah. He said, who's going to go before us to, to preach the, the truth for righteousness? And Isaiah said, uh, send me. See, it says they trust in vanity and speak lies. They can achieve mischief and bring forth iniquity. And that should not be so in the nation of uh, Israel. So I'm ending with Isaiah chapter 33. Verse 14, it says the sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearfulness have surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh upright, it's like it. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despises the gain of oppressions. He that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes. He that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. So that is the re reward for the righteous who walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, that despises the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ear from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, meaning he can't be bought out. He don't he will not take an opportunity. Of, of to gain during oppression. He's going to stop his ears to hear about any type of uh, blood, a.k.a. killing, setting somebody up for, for whatever reason. 
You know, he's going to turn his eyes away from such evil. He's the one that's going to be blessed in the end. So with that, I hope it was edifying. And I say, y'all, because at the end of the day, man, when, when we do those things, we act like the heathens, man. These are what the Edomites do on the daily. They've been doing it since they came on this land. We're not to be like that. With that, I say, uh, shalom.